this live recording at Healers Bible Church, where the order of our lives is glory. God's messenger of hope, an agent of glory, Pastor Abraham Green serves with a prophetic mandate. As a senior pastor here at Healers Bible Church, to raise a generation of people ready for the coming of Christ. The message you are about to hear has the proclivity to move you into actions. The order of your life is glory. Our future is bright. Tonight I wanted to ask the Lord, say, Lord, I am here to be taught of you. I am here to be transformed. I am here for a touch. Touch me in this meeting today. Speak to me in this meeting today. Begin to speak to the Lord. Father, we are here to be taught. We are here, Lord, for a word. We are here for a transformation. Speak to us, Lord, tonight. Lord, speak to everyone. In the precious name of Jesus, speak to our situations, address each and every one of us with our names in the precious name of Jesus. We give you the praise, Father. 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 Father. I just want you to rise up with me as we worship you one more time. Hallelujah. we read the word of God just standing as a sort of regard for the word of God because God said he's exalted his word even above his name Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 we read together and then we read our text just for a charge before we go straight into the word of God tonight Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 let's read together if it's coming up on the board or if you're there with your Bible Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 To him that is joined to all the living 
there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. I want you to say something. There is hope for me. I am better than a lion. But I'm much more I'm better than a dog. Say, I am better than a dog. There is hope for my future. Say, I have a future. And it is bright. Please turn with me again to the book of Luke chapter 5. We we'll read from verse 1. Luke chapter 5. We we'll read together from verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them. They were washing their nets. In other words, they've cast off restraint. They were tired. They had given up. But Jesus came to them. Today, Jesus is in the house. Amen. There is something that is about to happen in this place today that you have never witnessed before. Amen. You have seen miracles before. You have seen the touch of God before. But not like tonight. Because no matter what you have seen in your life, your future is better. Amen. And whatever you experience today, tomorrow is better. Amen. There is hope for you. These guys were fishing and they got to a point they got tired. They packed up the net. They were washing their net. They were giving up. They were packing it up because it wasn't working. After the this conference, everything that is not working in your life will start working. Yeah. Everything that is not working in your family will start working. Yeah. Every business that is not working will start working. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In verse 3, I said, and he entered into one of the sheep. Which was Simon's. I don't know if it's your ship God is going to enter today. It's already in my own ship. I said it's in my own boat. He entered into one. There were many ships there. There were many people who packed their boat. There were many people who had given up. But he entered into the boat of one of them. The Bible said he, gave, he sent for his word. His word reached them. Healed them. When God sent the word, not many people are catching it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But he said the entrance, that means the word of God is an entity. The same way Jesus entered into the sheep, he can enter into your life very cheaply. You are going to open up your own heart this morning to receive power from the word of God. Is somebody getting ready? In verse 4, he says, Now when he had left speaking, somebody said when he had left speaking. But before then, let's go back into verse 3. He said, and when he entered into the, the, into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And when he sat down, he thought them out in the, from the sheep. What happened is that Jesus entered there. He had their situation. He knew what they were going through. They were complaining. They said it's not working. They said it's not growing. It is not working. We don't know what next we ought to do. We don't know what solution, what the formula is. Jesus said, you know what, sit down. I said to you that this ministry is not built on anything else but the word of God. The Bible said he sat them down. Even when they were hungry and he was to feed 5,000 of them. The Bible said let them sit down in groups. If you can sit down to be taught, your hope will come alive. Amen. There is nothing the word of God can catch. There is no how, how, how big or how terrible they have described that situation. When the word of God catches it. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful. I see the word of God that is being taught tonight, changing your story in the name of Jesus. Amen. On this mountain, we go from story to glory. Amen. There is nobody who has been part of this house that has not come from one story. But one thing we are sure of is that as we come to the throne of grace, it changes it. And we go from story to glory, Amen. from glory to glory, Amen. to glory to glory. So shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. In verse 4, and he said, and when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into the deep and let down your name. Something is about to happen to somebody. Amen. Just in one more minute, you're going to say, Lord God, I am here. My heart is open. It is me you came for. It is me you came for. It is me you came for. I am here for you. Begin to speak to the Lord. Father, I am here for you. I believe that it is me you came for. I believe you came for this church. You know the point we are. You know where we ought to be. And you have sent us a word. You have sent us your servant. Lord, we are receptive. 
Lord, we are open. You came for us. We are ready for you. Speak your word to us. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. I want you to put your hands together as you take your seats. And please say with me, he lives in me. Making the most of me through his word. I am changing into what he wants me to be. I'm changing into what he wants me to From be. glory to glory. From glory to glory. His word that I'm about to hear His word that I'm about will once again reveal his thoughts for me. I receive the word with joy and gladness. The order of my life is glory. Hallelujah. Amen. For your hope to be alive, you need certain things to be in place. Everything they said maintain. A, a static position until a relevant force is applied. Many destinies are packed. Many destinies have been written off. Many people are moving. They are, they are living, but they are not actually alive. Their hope is dead. They can't, when you tap them and say, where are you going? They can't describe it because the hope is gone. But for your hope to come alive, you need certain things. Faith is one of those things you need. Yesterday we were talking about that for your hope to come alive, you need love. You see, you cannot touch the God of hope, the God of glory without love in your heart. Is somebody get what I'm saying? The Bible says, they came to Jesus Christ. They said, you know what, of all the greatest commandments, which one is the biggest? Which one is the best? Which one is the most important? Jesus said to them, he said, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul. And you will love your neighbor as yourself. And again, he said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, he said, you will serve the Lord your God. He said, and he will bless your bread and your water. Until you are a lover of God, you don't have hope. I'm really sorry to say there are some audacious system, I, I mean, statements that people need to hear. But the thing is, until you are a lover of God, there is no hope. Because he said, I know the thoughts that I have for you. He said, they are the thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you, you cannot, he can't give you if you are not in love with him. That is why you see many people are living, but not everybody is participating of the portion that God made for them. Not many people are fulfilling their destiny. From this day, you will move from just, li from just living to being alive for God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We also said yesterday that for your love, for your, for your hope to be alive, you need grace. You see, there are several things that has caused many people to stop. Little challenges stop them in their life because they lack grace. Grace holds destiny. For example, I was going to make illustration to the fact that as this church started and we were faced with challenges where we were before, we found this place, but it was difficult to strike a deal to come here. And I remember one of those days, the Holy Spirit speak to me. He said, call the agent and collect the key. So I called the agent. I collect the, the key. I came here with a few people. We came here. And I had the key. But I, between the balance sheet, I called my pastor, Pastor David. I, you know, I showed them. said, this is the income. This is the expenditure. How are we going to translate into this thing that we want to do? But I came here. I was lying down here on the floor alone. And God said to me, for you to do mighty things, you need grace. He said, and for you to need grace. He said, do you remember what I said? He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. He said, that we may obtain mercy and find grace for help in time of need. And God said to me, you know, when you have money in your account, you know, when I hand good money, I know how my banker, I don't worry about money. Even when my wife holds my card, I'm not worried about it. When you get to the cash point, you know money is there. So, you know, there will be a withdrawal. And God said to me, the same way you are confident that you have money in the bank and you go to the cash point and you withdraw money or you go to Barclays and you make a withdrawal with boldness. He said, the same way you are coming into the train of grace. That's your bank. He said, from this throne of grace, whatever you lack, whatever you need to move to the dimension you are getting to, he said, is delivered unto you. From that day, God said to us, he said, everywhere this church is represented on the face of the head. Just the same way my father had the first tabernacle, he said, you have the throne of grace. So as you come here, you are coming for a withdrawal. Did somebody get what I'm saying? You are coming for what? A withdrawal. As you are coming here, you are withdrawing prosperity. Yeah. Withdrawing healing. Yeah. Withdrawing deliverance. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Also for you to fulfill destiny, for, you to, for your hope to come alive, you need power. 
Is nobody gets what I'm saying? I will be very, very honest with you. Of late, we will face certain challenges and the Lord will say to me, he said, this one goeth not out except by fasting and prayer. He said, Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples. He said to them, make sure you don't do anything until you are endowed with power from on high. Destiny is not fulfillable without power. I'm telling you, it's not easy for you to be where I am today. It's not possible for you to be the boss that you want to be tomorrow. So many things you are eyeing in your future are not easily achieved. You are looking at the picture of where we want to go. It is not easy. I mean, it's not achievable without power. If somebody gets what I'm saying? Somebody is going to cry out for the power of God. You are going to leave this conference and say, God, I just don't want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian with power. And the Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 3, he said, and there appeared like a cloven tongue upon them. And he rested upon all of them. I am ordinary, but when the power of God comes upon my life, I'm so much. If somebody gets what I'm saying? You are ordinary, but when the power of God comes upon your life, it ignites your dream. You are talking about a thousand in Milton Kings. Well, have you checked the demography of, uh, of Milton Kings? How many people are there? But when the power of God comes upon you, what is undoable is doable with power. Yeah. If somebody gets what I'm saying? And lastly, yesterday we said that for you to fulfill destiny, you need revelation. Somebody said with me, revelation. revelation. But very quickly, I want to quickly share with us just before the man of God come. You know when your boss is in town, <laughs> you need to know how to gather yourself together because they will be marking you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And before we go into the word of God, which I know we are all geared off, I want to share with us five things that will provoke your expectation. Somebody said, will be five things. Five things. That will provoke you to launch into a destiny that God has marked for you. Number one is expectation. Somebody said, will be expectation. expectation. Please, let's quickly turn our Bible to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. He said, I will stand upon my watch. Let's read it together from the body if it's there. I will stand upon my watch and I will set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what is he will say unto me. You see, you don't see what people say. Somebody get what I'm saying? You know what? You don't see what people say. But you see the man, he said, I will stand upon my watch. That means he had expectation. Is somebody expecting something tonight? Is somebody expecting something tonight? So number one, you need expectation. You can't receive what you are not expecting. If you take what you are not expecting, you are it's tantamount to stealing. Is somebody what I'm saying? Now, there is a delivery that was delivered to my house recently. Yes, I mean, was it yesterday? Now, it was meant for the neighbor. They were knocking on the neighbor's door. Nobody was answering. So they brought it as I was going out. They brought the parcel. I was also expecting something from Amazon. So as I saw Amazon, I believe it was for me. The guy said, no, it's not yours. We were looking for your neighbor. Please, would you help us to deliver it to your neighbor? Now, if I kept that thing, I'm a thief. Are you somebody getting what I'm saying? Now, your destiny is not something that is meant to be coming to you by coincidence. It is a delivery. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you are not expecting a destiny, you won't fulfill one. You know, the fact that you are alive today does not mean you are fulfilling your destiny. Don't mistake the two. And when we are talking about hope, we are talking about your destiny. We are talking about what God has prepared for your future. What you are not expecting, you can't catch. If somebody gets what I'm saying, expectation is the mother of manifestation. There is nobody who can amount to anything they are not expecting. If you amount to it, you just walk up. Even those who play lottery, they were expecting something. They were expecting outcome. Is somebody with me? So I want your expectation to be alive today. Don't look at who is beside you to, take, to, to determine what you will catch. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Many years ago in 1996, I was sitting in a like this. I've had so much. I've become close. I was playing piano for the man of God. Reverend Sam, are they hear me? You know, and I, the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me before I went for that meeting. That something will drop upon your destiny today. So I went to that meeting expectant. Highly expected. And the man of God came then in Hepworth Hotel. And as he was ministering, the title simply was Break In to Breakthrough. But because God told me to expect something. And as he was ministering, I saw myself live behind this. He has success power in the banner behind him. Behind it, straight I saw there. Success, wisdom, power, outreach. 
And God said to me, as you leave this program, he said, you are starting a boss ministry tomorrow. Boss ministry. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, that's what I, I have for you. It's a package for you. And that's how my life started in the ministry. 1996, we started going in the bus in Nigeria from Ikeja to Yaba, from Ikeja to CMS. From that one, God spoke to me to go to Ivory Coast. Is somebody gets what I'm saying? My life is a combination of story because I was expecting a destiny that he, he, he spoke to me earlier. This is where you are going. What you are not expecting can come to you. Is somebody expecting tonight? Yes. Are you expecting tonight? He said, expectation involves waiting. He said, those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. He said, they will mount on with wings as eagles. But those who are not waiting, they will just be like, what do you call them? Chicken. They will be, they will be crawling upon the earth. From today, you won't crawl anymore in the name of Jesus. He said, surely there is an end. He said, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. From this day, whatever you are expecting from the Lord, what he has willed for you, what he has created to you, it shall be delivered into your hand in the name of Jesus. Yes. I said, it shall be delivered into your hand in the name of Jesus. Yes. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, he said, therefore, keep watch. Somebody said with me, keep watch. keep watch. He said, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. You do not know on what day your Lord will come. The same thing is being repeated in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. He said, keep watch, but you do not know. You don't know when God is going to pass. I am highly expected. I said I am highly expected. I'm highly expected. I am so expectant that it could, everybody around me could tell from money that my pastor is coming to town, but not just because of my pastor. I believe what I need for the next dimension is coming in a package. And you know what? I'm ready to devoid. it. But you have not just come to watch a man. You have not just come to listen to a man. Are you expecting something? Whatever you are expecting, it will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, you need a receptiveness. Somebody say with me, receptiveness. Yeah. Look at what he said. That I will stand there and I will wait to see what he say unto me. If somebody gets what I'm saying. Now, you move into a dimension of receptive. When you are standing on the watch, expecting to see what somebody is saying. You don't see what people say. You hear what they say. But when you are receptive, you can smell it. You can see it. You can hear it. I see a miracle here tonight. Amen. I smell a miracle here tonight. Amen. Until you are receptive, you don't gather a miracle. Receptiveness. Is somebody receptive in the house tonight? He yes. said your receptiveness will affect your, what you collect. Your receptiveness will, it will affect what you collect. I believe somebody is collecting something here tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, you are collecting something here tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. The number three thing that you will need tonight is revelation. Somebody said with me, revelation. revelation. It's not every word that is spoken that is revealed. And it's not everything that is revealed that is caught. The word of God is going to be spoken for, and the word of God is already going forth. From opening prayer, God is already working. In fact, before opening prayer, God is already speaking. I saw somebody else came into this building just an hour or two before this service, and the person saw power, saw joy, saw peace, saw hope, saw love, saw glory, and I saw her dance. He said, my hope. She said, my joy. She said, my peace. She said, my hope. That is somebody that is not waiting for a big name. If somebody was like, she saw the letter and already she's tapping revelation. She said, I, my joy, my hope, my peace, and somebody else is waiting for a touch. If somebody gets what I'm saying, you need revelation. He said that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. That you may be able to know until it is revealed you don't know. If somebody gets what I'm saying? Revelation is not just that you find a scripture you have not discovered before. It's that you find the life that is behind it. Revel what is revelation? Revelation is a specific word for a specific person at a specific time for a specific situation. Today, God is speaking a specific word for you. Amen. He's speaking a spe specific word to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I need revelation. I need you're revelation. going to pray just now. You're going to say, Lord, open my eyes to see what I need to see that will open up my destiny. Please open your mouth and just begin to pray. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see. Father, open my eyes to see what I need to see. Lord, open my eyes to see what I need to know. Open my eyes to see what I need to discover. 
in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I said here that every eye has a lens. Somebody said with me a lens. a lens. You see, you are just looking. There is a lens. Every, every one of us are seen. We are looking at the same thing. But some people are seeing something else. Did somebody get what I'm saying? The same word of God that we are all reading, the same word of God that we are all hearing, but some people are hearing something else. Hearing what? Something else. I was in a service, again, 1996 or 1997, and I was sick, plagued, and I was at Raji Oba in Winners Chapel then, and I was saying, God, if you could take these itches away from my body, if you can just take this thing away from my body, that's what I was there for, for healing. At that Saturday morning anointing service, but as the word of God was coming, God showed me a revelation as God's servant was speaking. He said, there are some people in this service today. He said, the same grace and anointing that is upon my life is coming upon you. From that day, I have not forgotten. He was wearing a red suit. I still remember up to today. Because I was waiting and God revealed, opened my eyes. I saw myself in that red suit. Up to today, you can check my wardrobe. I've never had a red suit. Because by that revelation, I went home and I saw a, a trance. I told my wife, maybe 1999, as early as I met her. I said, I saw myself in the suit that Bishop Oedepo was. And I saw myself, many people drunken. What he said that day entered into my spirit. And it became a revelation and God began to reveal my future. I'm not surprised. I was not waiting for God to reveal the revelation of my life to me in Romans chapter 8. But the same encounter of my father came from Romans chapter 8. As a matter of fact, I was focusing on other scripture. But the Lord spoke to me and said, To whom God will make known what is the mystery, what is the riches of this mystery to the Gentile, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. He said, For the endless expectation of the whole creation is waiting, waiting for the manifestations of God. The sons of God are in the house tonight. And you will receive your own revelation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number four, you need inspiration. Somebody say with me, inspiration. Many people are hearing, but not many people are inspired by what they are hearing. In Job chapter 32 verse 8, it says that there is a spirit in man, but it is the inspiration of God Almighty that gives them understanding. Somebody say with me, inspiration. Inspiration, inspiration provokes you to do things that you naturally could not have done. Inspiration also makes you to see the future. You are inspired. In 2004, as I was getting married, as, you know, maybe it was during the preparation, I saw Pastor David Oedepo. He was coming out then, and I believe from his Pojo, I believe he was Pojo 406, blue color, then. And I went to him. I saw by inspiration, by revelation, and I said to my wife, I said, God showed me that I'm having a program in UK with Pastor David Oedepo. You remember that? And I rushed to Pastor David. I was, do you remember that encounter at all? And I said, I said, I saw me having a program with you in the UK. As at that time in the UK, I don't have paper. If somebody gets what I'm saying? But I was inspired. And that inspiration got me to be bold enough to go and address him. Before then, God told me, as early as I've met, I said, I see, I see a future. This David, one day, I'm just saying this for the first time in his presence. 1999, I believe Shiloh 99 or Shiloh 2000. Brother Tosin Jolo Ajelori was buying a ticket, giving his ticket to him to return to America or Robert University. And we went together to deliver the ticket to him. And as he was turning back, Shiloh was going on. And the spirit said to me, Say, that man you see is your own pastor. Is somebody get what I'm saying? That man you see. And from then, since I got married to my wife, I said, You know, that's my father. We said, But I'm waiting for you in this generation. So when I see the ordination, when I see, I was already geared up. I was inspired. The future, what it is about your future is when it lacks inspiration, you don't know what to expect. If somebody gets what I'm saying? There are certain things that are happening to you by coincidences. The power of God can inspire you to see in the future. Somebody is going to be inspired by the Holy Spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lastly, one thing that you need again is the prophetic. Somebody say with the prophetic. The prophetic. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he said, by a prophet, God brought Israel out. He said, and by a prophet, Israel is established. You are not established except by a sending forth of prophets. I've also said in this house before, my life has been guarded a lot. And I know some people in this house, some people don't like names being mentioned. But I have been guarded too much by prophets in my life. 
I don't mean, I mean, I don't mean seers. And the spirit of the Lord said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean prophetic signals in my life. I'll tell you this story and I'll bring the man of God up to come and cheer us up in the word of God tonight. When I was growing up as a young child, you've heard the story many times. I was growing up very sickly. And my parents were pouring their money and resources on me just to keep me alive. But one day I heard that Bishop Abim, Archbishop Benson Idauza, was coming to a church just in front of our house. I was expecting I would be about eight or nine years old then. I was expecting that this man that we watch on TV, that legs are coming out, that hands are coming out, that great miracles are happening. I want, I will be healed. That tonight I will be healed. But something happened to my disappointment. When I got there, even as close as the place was to my house, when I got there, the whole place was filled. It was so filled that as at that time, in the 80s, that you had people guarding, you know, security. I could not reach him. And I'm like, how could my house be here? And I could not touch who is here. But something happened to me that night. I was weeping that I could not, as I was trying to go, there were too many people. As I was returning back to the gate to make escape to my house, I saw the car that it was, and there was nobody by the car. And I took myself and climbed the car and lay on it. And said, whatever is in, is in this man that is making him to perform miracle, Lord, I want it. I made that day. I, I said, Lord, I desire that thing. Now, at that point, where I was born, where I was, I never equate anything that would create an encounter between me and that man of God. Is somebody get what I'm saying? But by privilege, because God helped me to come in contact with the prophetic, something happened to me. Many years later, I was privileged to be a um, praise and worship leader somewhere where it would be ministry. First of all, I was playing vineyard. Bishop John Osauni. I was just playing bass where they were dedicating the building. And the man of God came in and I was, you know, slapping the bass and he got interested. He said, who is there upstairs? He said, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. That was the beginning. At another occasion, I was leading praise, praise and worship. He said, you come here, come here. And he hugged me, he said, take it. I said, take what? Is somebody get what I'm saying? Now, because I was young in the Lord at that time, he said, take it. I was still asking, take what? But I will never forget, the encounter with the prophetic can change your life. The suit he was wearing, I described it to my wife, I said, it's one of those suits that when people argue, it's like they prick you. So the thing pricked me that for months, I'm telling you the heavenly truth, for months I was still feeling the effect in my skin, that something is preaching me. When I feel it, my body shakes. And a year later, the man of God was gone to be with the Lord. And God said with me, the transference that you asked for when you were a child, from that man of God, as Bishop Benson in the house, has now been transferred into you. If somebody gets what I'm saying? Now, you might be looking at me and say, this guy is too audacious. Look at what he's saying. <laughs> what is he talking about? Just come and watch us in our future. Encounter with the prophetic will turn your life around. Amen. One word from a prophet will turn your situation around. Amen. As the word of God is coming forth tonight, I have no doubt in my heart that your testimony, Milton Kings, will hear about it. Amen. Your family will hear about it. Amen. Look, at the end of this conference, this church, our testimonies will be heard about. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I want you to rise up with me. It is our great joy to know that you have been transformed by the word of God that you have listened to. For inquiries, prayer support, or counseling, Call Greater Works Office. Or email admin at healersbiblechurch.com. Or visit our website www.healersbiblechurch.com. The order of your life is glory. <laughs>